Welcome to the world of Lightwave. If you're looking at this, you're probably in a situation where you've been thrown into needing to use Lightwave for work. Uh, maybe you work in a cable station, uh, industrial, or a school, and you need to have a crash course to understand how to use Lightwave. Well, hopefully this will help you. What I'm working with here is Lightwave 8, the most recent version available of Lightwave. Many, many people out there are still using Lightwave 7.5. A lot of the video toaster users are still using 7.5. So what I'm going to do is switch over my interface to resemble 7.5. Personally, I like the 7.5 interface much more, uh, especially for teaching and for introducing people into Lightwave. So we're going to do that by clicking on my Edit button and selecting edit menu layout. Now that brings up this menu, my menu menu. All I'm going to do over here is switch this from the default layout, which is what happens when you load up 8 for the first time, and select 7.5 style. All that really does is swaps around a bunch of these buttons. Click on done. I have a few more tabs up here. I have a few more objects as you can see, a lot of buttons on the side, something a, a bit more practical and also much easier to work with. So the very first thing I suggest that you do is go into your interface options and switch to the 7.5 layout. It will make things easier for you. So to understand Lightwave, the first thing you need to know is Lightwave actually comes in two pieces layout and modeler. If your hub is working correctly, you can click on the button up top on layout and it will bring up modeler. Modeler is exactly what it sounds like. You model object, objects. These objects get saved and they get loaded into layout. And layout can be thought of as the scene, the movie set. The modeler is the workshop the layout is the movie set. I say movie set because we have a camera and we have a light and this big old grid you see here is the stage. Okay, hopefully you're with me so far. Now, how do you actually do stuff in Lightwave? Well, we load up objects, we light them, we animate them, we render them. Hopefully it's something useful. So we're going to start with loading an object. by going to the menu button on the side, add objects. Now if you'll notice, right next to this button here, where objects, my pull down menu, load object, there is a symbol. In fact, you'll see that on a lot of the buttons. In this case, it's a little plus. Now what that means is I can hit the plus key on my keyboard and have the same action these buttons show me my keyboard shortcuts and you'll see that as in down here towards the bottom objects capital O phones capital V lights capital L many of the tools many of the buttons will have the shortcut right next to them very handy makes it very easy to learn how to use the shortcut keys in this case, our move tool is T, our rotate tool is Y. So I've loaded up an object. Now what we are looking through is the perspective view. Now I'm going to be going over a number of things. I've taught Lightwave for a number of years. Uh, I've taught hundreds of people and there always seems to be common things, common stumbling blocks to understanding. And I'm going to be hitting those. So you might understand one thing, but uh, stay with me because these are really basic things and you know, you'll know you need to know everything to do anything of what I'm telling you. So we have our cow object here. The important thing to know is this is just an object, this is our layout, we need to take the picture, we need to render a frame. We render by going to our rendering button and this brings up our render options 
quite a few options here. The important ones are render first frame, render last frame, render step, which means it'll go from 1 to 60. I could set this to 1 to 30 or 15 to 116, whatever I want, and render every frame. I might want to render every other frame or every 15 frames if doing a test. The other important thing is our output files. It is suggested by pretty much anyone who has any sense to render out individual frames. So I'm going to click on the button that says RGB files. Now we're always rendering in RGB. Actually we're always rendering in RGBA because we have red, green, and blue plus alpha. So I'm going to select a directory and uh, let's select one and just create a new one and call it cow frames and just name it cow. What will happen now when I render this sequence of images, in this case from 1 to 30, it will save it with this name cow001.tga. TGA stands for target. If you don't like targets for some reason, you can choose one of any of these other formats. There are a lot of very popular formats. I know PNG is becoming very popular, uh, along with the ever-loving JPEG if you're tight on space or you, you have a whole lot of frames you're going to render. If you require an image with an alpha channel, you'll want one of the 32-bit images. I stick with Target 32 just because they've always worked for me and more out of habit than anything. There is an option of having Lightwave compile the frames. You can save animation in much the same way. You could call it cow anim. And I can select how I want that to save as an AVI or as a QuickTime. Those are pretty much your two real options. Uh, if you're working on a Mac, you may only, I have seen on some systems where you, o you have only QuickTime available and not AVI. It is not suggested that you render directly, you render your frames directly to an animation format for several reasons. Uh, one is you may need to stop the animation, the rendering before the animation is completed, which may cause your animation file to corrupt. Um, so you're just a lot safer by doing it, you know, a frame at a time. And once you have all your frames rendered, you can take them into another program and compile them as whatever animation you would like. Or you can even use Lightwave. A common trick is to take your frames once they're all rendered. And the frames can take anywhere from seconds to days to render. You know, it might take typically maybe 5 minutes, 10, 15 per frame. What many people do is take those frames, load, up, load them, load the frame sequence back as a backdrop, then select Save Animation. So you can use Lightwave to compile your animations. And we'll get to that in another section. So I'm going to turn off my Save Animation. The problem that people have when they start rendering, I'm going to, I can render current frame. This happens to about 50% of my students. They set up their animation. They turn, okay, I want to look at the front of the cow. And I want to zoom in. Okay, I want to render that image. I'm going to render a single frame. So I'll click on rendering, render current frame, and I'm seeing the back side of the cow. Even though in layout I'm looking at the front. The problem is the image gets rendered from the camera view. All right. This is one, probably the single most common mistake I see students use. They do not switch to camera view when they're setting up their scene and sometimes they spend a lot of time adjusting things to the perspective view when really they need to be adjusting it from the camera view. 
single biggest problem. The next biggest problem is understanding how keyframes work. There is a button here, Auto Key. It is it's a it's one of those 50/50 things. Half the time is great, half the time you don't want to use it. I'm going to turn it off for now to explain how Auto Key works. We have a sequence here. Our timeline is 1 to 60. That means 60 frames. And in video, we have we basically work on 60 frames per second, so that's two seconds of animation. So what I want to ha have happen, let's say in two seconds I want the cow to move across the screen. So we need to do two things. First we need to rotate the cow. So I go to my item under tools, rotate, and you'll notice there's a little Y there, and there's also a T under move. So I can hit my keyboard and I switch to the tools and you can see how it's represented very nicely here with my three circles circle meaning rotate arrows meaning it's moving so first of all I go back to my camera view I'm going to rotate it important tip here see down here I have my rotation I can punch in the number that I want or go into my screen and rotate it. Reset. Or I can grab one of these circles. And by grabbing the circle, by clicking my mouse right on that arrow, it will only move on that currently correct selected circle very handy. What usually happens is you're trying to rotate and you can see, well, I, I'm almost there, but I didn't want to rotate on my P direction or the B. This is important. You can turn off those channels. And I only have H, which is spinning like a record. It's impossible for me to turn, to move it, rotate it any other way except on the H. You can see how the other circles are ghosted. The simple thing, many beginning students ignore that or get confused by that and they get frustrated because it's not going exactly how they want it. Or you just punch in the number you want. So I've rotated. Now I want to move it. So I'm going to click on move. Click explanation X, Y, and Z. kind of difficult to see here, but there is a Z over there, and there's an X over there. And then the Y, X means right and left. This is the X axis, and you can see it moving here. Z is the forward and back. Now, the third most confusing thing for new students is I'm clicking on my left mouse button. I'm moving it forward and back, right and left. How the heck do I get it to move up and down? Well, something new with these arrows, before we clicked on the circles and it restricted the movement to just that axis, I can click right on the green arrow here. It'll let me move it up and down. But what if I'm over here and I want to move it up and down? On the PC, it's a right click, and we get to move it. I should also mention with rotate, I have to activate right clicking, I move on the B axis. The other two motions let me move on the H and the P. And I need to rotate that back again. Okay, so we're going to move it to the side. The whole point of this is we want it to move from right to left. So I have my cow there. I need to create a key. Even though there's already a key there, there's this little yellow thing. The 
key locks it in. Now going to advance to frame 60, move it across the screen, create a key at 60. And as I scrub the animation, this is the scrub bar down here, my cow moves across. Now when I render the scene, and let's just render the scene, this will it's ask me if I want to end it at frame 60 because I believe yeah, I just set it to render till 30. Lightwave is actually looking at my scene and seeing that I have this set to 60 right now it's just double checking to make sure. So let's move this out of the way. We can see the window is updating. The computer is moving, it's interpolating between the 0 frame and the 60 frame and it calculates how much it needs to move that cow on each frame. Alright, biggest student problem number four. Alright, well, okay, I've got the cow moving across, but I think I want it to arc. I want it to jump up in the middle. So, let's see, on frame 30, halfway through, I'm going to have the cow be up here. Alright, so let's move. Uh-oh, it jumped back. Or, instead of having the cow move all the way off, I want it to move here and then turn and look at the camera. Okay, so I've moved it. It jumped back. I can't tell you how many times a student has used that term, it jumped back. What happens is, I have auto key turned off, which means it does not automatically create a keyframe. So I need to create key, even though there's already a key there. Create key overwrites the old key, and now I have this action going in. And let's see, let's create a rotate it here so it kind of goes straight till it gets there. Create key. Now I'm thinking, maybe I don't want that to happen at 45, maybe I want that to happen, let's say, at 50. I can punch in another number. I can also create a key for just one channel. Now a channel means just a single motion or rotation. Any of the mouse actions, the movement on the X, Y, and Z, for translation, movement on the H, P, and V for rotation, or scale, which means size, on the X, Y, and Z. Sometimes it's very handy to keyframe just one of these channels. So I'm going to create a keyframe just for H on 50. And we'll scrub through it. And there we are. That is basic introduction to Lightwave, keyframing, loading an object, moving an object, and rendering.